Welcome to this video, we're going to discuss now exercises 7 to 11 of chapter 23, Measuring a Nation's Income. Remember, this is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, so revised estimates of US GDP are usually released by the government near the end of each month. Find a newspaper article that reports on the most recent release or read uh, the news release uh, yourself at this webpage, the website of the US Bureau of Economic Analysis. Discuss the recent changes in real nominal GDP and the components of GDP. So we're going to have a look here a little bit to this webpage. So here, uh, first, we are going to scroll down a little bit, and here we find the first indicator. This first indicator is the gross domestic product that we we have been talking about during this chapter. So here is the value of the Q2 of 2019. Remember, Q2 should be uh, Q1 should be January, February, and March, and Q2 should be April. May and June. And here you see an increase of 2.1%. So let's click on this. So then when we move with this uh, with this uh, GDP, we're going to find more information regarding this uh, change. Actually, we're going to have a look about the composition of the GDP. What about the consumption? investment, government, and net exports, which are the main components of GDP. And actually, there are interactive uh, charts uh, that you can find more information. So here we find second quarter of 2019 to 1%, and for the first quarter, 3.1%. So here uh, you see the explanation. So real gross domestic product GDP increased 2.0% in the second quarter of 2019. So then and the first quarter was the increase of 3.1%. So when we uh, scroll down a little bit, here is the interactive data. So we're going to have a look here to the GDP and the national income. And here we're going to, we're going to click on begin using the data. So here, we're going to have here the first, the domestic product and income. And here, I'm, I, want, I want to click on this, the first. So here, you see the, the increase or the change of the, of the GDP comparing the previous period. So then here we see an increase of 2.1 compared with the value of Q1. And here you see all the components. So here, the second one is the consume. Uh, then this gross private domestic investment we are going to consider as investment. So here we see an important decrease. And then when we move to the net exports, we already know that it should be exports and imports. And then government consumption, which should be the government expenditure. So here we see the increase of that. So you can see here the important one should be the consumption here, but uh, result for investment pro uh, this provided or due to the structures, which was the 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 major uh, decrease. And here we see five percent for the government, and so on and so forth. The other one that I want to show you is this one of, um, again, the, the domestic product, but the situation of not, not in growth, but I want to show you in terms of participation of the GDP. Because remember, we already saw due to the, the percentage, but uh, we want to show you the difference of participation in level in US dollars. And this is important that we, we are seeing now just in real terms. We are not discussing 
about nominal terms because it's how we can compare and remember real uh, is better because you already avoid the situation of the prices and you compare more, more about what is more important the quantities so okay so that that was the the situation it doesn't work okay so I'm going to move with the other in the meantime it works so here uh, this is the next question a farmer grows wheat which she sells to a miller for 100 the miller turns the wheat into flour uh, which she sells to a baker for 150 the baker turns the wheat into bread which she sells to consumers for 180 so consumers eat the bread so first what is the GDP in the economy explain so we already know the, pra the price of wheat which is 100 the price of four which is uh, 150 the bread 180 so here we have that the GDP naturally should be 150 uh, which actually should be I'm sorry 180 times the quantities of times the quantities of, of bread so this should be the value the 180 times the bread are sold in that economy value added is defined as the value of the of a producers output minus the value of the intermediate goods that the producer buys to make the output assuming there are no intermediate goods beyond those described above calculate the value added of each of these of the three producers so first the add value of wheat naturally should be 100 because it uh, it starts from zero then the add value for flour should be the difference between these two produ products which is naturally 50 150 minus 100 and then bread minus the previous uh, the previous good so then naturally should be 180 minus 150 so here we have the uh, naturally the value added which is exactly the same as the the GDP for one piece of bread C what is the total value added of the three producers in, the, in this economy? How does it compare to the economy GDP? Does this example suggest another way of calculating GDP? Well, we already know this one. And actually, the add value of each component or each intermediate good and the final good, this is exactly the same as the GDP. So as a conclusion, there are two ways different for computer the GDP with the via expenditure or via uh, value added. So here is two. I guess that my internet is not working. Okay, whatever. So nine goods and services that are not sold in markets such as food and consumed at home are generally not included in GDP can you think of how this might cause the numbers in the second column table 3 to misleading in a comparison of the economic well-being of the United States and India explain so here is the table 3 remember that the this um, this table provide a comparison with the real GDP per person and some components as life expectancy, average years of schooling, and satisfied with water quality. And the conclusion basically is like those countries with a, with a higher real GDP per person actually is expected an average that people will have more life expectancy, more average years calling and better satisfaction regarding the water quality. So here, uh, if India has more transactions, then naturally all these that we consider underground economy those that are not accounted for the GDP actually is what we uh, talk about the underground economy and actually it should be lower the gap uh, between countries because this India value is not real it should be added plus all the transactions that are not considered here so that should be the, the basic the basic idea 
Then, the participation of women in the U.S. labor force has risen dramatically since 1970. So, how do you think this rise uh, affected GDP? So, naturally, first, because of consumption. If you, you have more women in the economy, they're going to receive an income, and naturally, they will consume part of that income. We can see that it should be in the food, for example, the perishable goods, or even clothing and devices and all the things, services that you can think about it. What about the investment? So naturally, because of the better uh, power of that, that you have, the power for purchasing purchasing power of the family should increase so naturally it should be like more investment in terms of for example new houses and then factors of production naturally women will be part as an owner of factor of productions and then the the government um, expenditures so for example the salaries as well for uh for for the women that they are working now for uh, that um for that um public sector and net exports naturally because they should be involved in the enterprises and they are going to buy imports goods as well so then now imagine a measure of well-being that includes time spent working in the home and taking leisure how would the change in this measure of well-being compared to the change in GDP? So naturally, when women they start to work, they are going to have less free time. So if GDP consider leisure time and maybe well-being for a time dedicated to the child care, for example, naturally the GDP for one side, you're getting less satisfaction because of the less leisure time, and then on the other side you're getting salary. So then just in the case that the well-being of receiving money is higher than the, the, the welfare of staying with your children, in that case they should be better work. Otherwise, should be better stay at home. Then, and uh, naturally, this time because spent working at home, so then uh, it should be kind of an equilibrium depending on that situation. Can you think of other aspects of well-being that are associated with the rise in women's la labor force participation? Would it be practical to construct a measure of well-being that includes these aspects? Obviously, all aspects that are not included now uh, should be relevant. This is what we call the underground economy, labor at home, own production, but obviously it's too difficult, it's almost impossible to collect that information. So for this reason, maybe it's not practical. However, it could be useful somehow. 11. One day, Barry and Barber Inc. collects 400 for haircuts. Over this day, his equipment depreciates in value by 50 of the remaining 350. Barry sends $30 to the government in sales taxes, takes home 220 in wages, and retains 100 in his business to add new equipment in the future. From the two 120 for that Barry takes home, he pays 70 in income taxes. Based on this information, compute Barry's contribution to the following measures of income. So first, gross domestic product. So you know that there is an income of 400, there is a depreciation of 50, there is a sales taxes for a 30, Wages for 220, equipment for 100, income taxes for 70. So first, identify the depreciation. So you know, well before that I'm going to move with the sale taxes. It does not belong to GDP directly, right? So we're not going to uh, take into account now for this, uh, for this moment because it does not belong to GDP like immediately. Then uh, the wages, the same, it does not belong to GDP. 
and then equipment yes because equipment can be considered as investment um, income taxes again taxes they don't belong to consumption investment expenditure net export directly maybe to the government income yes that maybe they are going to spend afterwards but at the beginning no then we have the first component which should be the investment and then uh, the depreciation does not belong to GDP remember because of the name gross domestic product anytime we have gross is because something is still to be discounted in this case the depreciation and income um, is for uh, 400 and consumption 400 why because this is paid by consumers to the to, for the barbarian barber for the haircuts so consumption actually should be 400 so then investment plus consumption the only components of those uh, of those transaction should be the GDP 500 what about net national product we already know that the, those numbers and we already know the net uh, national product should be the GDP minus depreciation so it should be 500 minus 50 should be 450 national income so remember the national income is the total income earned by a nation's residents in the production of goods and services almost identical to GDP just difference in data collection which is called a statistical discrepancy so national income should be 200 320 from the Barry's uh, perspective because this is the only guy that we know the income we need to know the the other income for all people that they pay for the haircuts but all the all just information provided for the exercise is the national income should be the income of uh, of Barry then personal income should be well we already have this one uh, and then a uh, disposable personal income should be 220 minus 70 from the Barry's perspective Barry's contribution should be 100 uh, 150 and that's all I'm going to see if the internet is working okay now it's working just for having a look to the other part so here uh, I want to have a look here to the gross domestic product this table and here you can see the part in values this is uh, in billions of dollars and here you have seasonally adjusted the annual rate so we are talking about real and this is the total value you, you see that the, the, the one that represent more for this 21,337 uh, is consumption with almost 15 well 14,500 dollars then we have the investment with three and then you have here uh, negative so US is a importer more than an exporter and the gross domestic product 3000 so just is what we saw during the chapter the maximum quantity of participation of gross domestic product is personal consumption expenditure and in the participation of goods and services we have goods for uh, 4500 and services almost ten thousand dollars okay i hope it has worth it has clarified some concepts and see you next time bye bye